Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus. I'm glad you've joined me this day, and I just want to pray, Father God, as we enter into the Word, we come with a heart that's open to receive. We come to receive, and we're ready, Father God. Ready for what? ready to receive your abundance, ready to receive a breakthrough, ready to receive correction, ready to receive, Father God, edification and encouragement, comfort. We're ready to receive, Holy Spirit. And we come, Father, we yield. And we ask you to open our eyes to see and ears to hear. Give us a heart that is receptive so that we do fully receive everything you have for us. We come to the table that overflows, that you prepared before us in the presence of our enemies, in this difficult season, that you are with us, Father. I thank you. Open the word, Holy Spirit. Teach us, show us, share with us, testify of Jesus, and give us precious revelation from this word today in the name of Jesus. Amen? I want to underscore that you are not alone. You know, we've looked at already that Jesus is the boat. Jesus made a promise to you if you will believe that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So you're not alone. You've got the Holy Spirit with you. And we've got to lay hold of who the Holy Spirit is. And I encourage you to take the course, the Ignited course on the Holy Spirit. It will help you. Because the Holy Spirit is there. And he's more than enough. I want to, we're going to lay hold of some things as the Lord allows us today. But I want to share with you real quickly a verse from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. And it says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. So God wants to change what's coming from your mouth. You know, we have words coming from our mouth that affirm and and confirm what we're going through. Confirm the hard places. Let's cut those out. Let's kill those words, as we're going to discover today. And it goes on to say, "But um, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that those, so it will give grace to those who hear it, the moment or season, so that you have a word in season for those that are hearing it. You are speaking the right word in your season. Amen? So God wants to do such a work in us. And God wants to bring us to a place that we gain a far surpassing victory. I don't want an escape in a season, but I want to overcome. But I want you to get this. We are told that when Noah came out of the ark after the flood, God declared that as long as the earth remains, there will be seasons. So if you're going through a difficult season, I have good news for you. The season will end. It has to. There's a law in place. There are some winters that I've gone through. It seems like they never end. I don't like winter. And it's worse when the winter never seems to want to break. You're in May and it's still cold. But I know something. That season has to break. There's a law in place. There are things that God's got in operation. And so there are things behind the scenes that we don't fully recognize, and the season will end. But let's gain a far surpassing victory. Let's lay hold of Him in the midst of this. Let us be changed and transformed and learn how to walk, as I said, with that more than enough victory in us because of Jesus. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 6, where we are basing this on. Uh, And of course, we're going to look at verse 15 today. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, having put on your shoes, because you cannot run, you cannot stand, you cannot go forward until you've done something with your feet. And we so often forget the importance of our feet. And what we put on our feet, because our feet is where we make contact with this world. The feet is where you touch the dirt and the evil of this world. And it's where you're exposed. And we need to have on the shoes of the gospel of peace. And I want you to align that word peace, because it's the good news of peace. And Jesus made it very clear to us. My peace I give you, not as the world gives. So there's a peace that comes from him that in the midst of the most difficult season, you have a far surpassing victory and you are kept in peace. And this is the place that God wants for you, is that you abide in peace. And we've got to learn to lay hold of that. And I don't think most of us have really got to that place. You look at Jesus, nobody disturbed his peace, even all the way up to the cross. How can you have that? we got to lay hold of that by the Holy Spirit. So your natural man can never achieve that. 
Your natural man is always moved, as, and I've tried to underline this by what it feels and touches, but your spirit man, and we've got to develop our spirit man, develop our spiritual muscles. You're going to have to work on, you know, starting to walk by the spirit man and not by your flesh man, because what has happened is we go around the circle, around the mountain again and again, because we walk by our flesh man, responding by our flesh seeing by our flesh instead of laying hold of this by the spirit man and our spirit man puts on the shoes of the gospel of peace all is well all is good and i i just want us to lay hold of um this peace which is so governing in your life this peace that you're kept in perfect peace his mind is set on the lord is kept in perfect peace you can be kept in perfect peace. God has given us a promise. So no matter how difficult the storm, to know that God has a victory for you. And so I want to, first of all, get you to see and, and have you remember the victories that God has done before in the past for you. Would you just take a moment and look over and remember the difficult times? And Holy Spirit, you just remind, you remind us. Share with us all the things that He's done in the past for us, how we've gone through difficult seasons in the past. There were seasons, Father God, that just overwhelmed us. We felt like it was all over, we were ready to quit, but you came through. And I also want you to remind us, Holy Spirit, of all the goodness, all the good things God has done. How many times He's blessed us when we didn't expect it? It was such a wonderful blessing that He's always been faithful. Can you remember this? There were times where God supernaturally supplied something that didn't make sense. It blessed you, but didn't make sense. But later on, it did. It was a preparation. It was a, a necessary need met before the problem arised, arose. Sorry. And I want you to see that God has always been caring for you. God has always been there for you. And so if you can remember what He's done in the past and how you overcame by Him, and so get on these shoes of peace. Let's just lay hold of some stuff. Hallelujah. Go with me to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Because we've got to learn to see things from a different perspective. And so here we have a situation where Elias is giving prophetically. He is able to see the plans of the enemy. And he's revealing it to the Israelis so that the, the, the people are able to respond in time. They get a word in season because God, has, God wants to use you to give a word in season. And Elias is able to give the people a word in season because he's able to see things from a different perspective. And it, the enemy was so mad at him because he knew the plans of the enemy. It was like he was able to come into the room eavesdrop, watch what was going on, and, and reveal that to the children of Israel. So they were always ready. They always knew. Can you imagine God wants to bring you such a place where you are fully aware of all the plans of the enemy, and it doesn't take you by surprise. Do you think that anything took Jesus by surprise? He was fully aware of it. And God wants to bring you to a wondrous place in Him where you walk with such a victory that you're fully aware of it. No, God has already prepared me for the season. I'm, I, I know. I know His plans. And as you know His plans, you also know God's plans. And so look at this. We're in chapter 6, verse 8. Now the king of Aram was warring against Israel. So the enemy was warring against Israel. And the enemy is warring against not just you. It's your family. It's your church. There's so much on the line. If you could see that what's on the line is more than you, what's at stake is greater than you. And we often fix and, and we look and see the problem, us, me. See what I'm going through. And if we can allow the Holy Spirit to open our eyes, it's more than that. See, God has got a gift to you. God's got a purpose in you. God wants to do something in and through you. He wants to give a testimony. And that testimony, of course, is going to impact others. The breakthrough is going to impact others. A lot of time, what's happening, what the enemy's doing is trying to hinder something. God has called you to do something, and the enemy's trying to hinder and stop it. And so he's warring against you. Remember, we, we discovered in Ephesians that we wrestle not. But we have an enemy that's warring against us, trying to stop us, trying to hinder us, trying to steal, kill, and destroy, and stop the very purpose of God. 
So get an understanding that it's more than you. Um, and it says this, and he canceled with his servant saying, in such and such a place we shall camp. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel saying, beware that you do not pass this place for the Armenians are coming down there. And the king of Israel sent to the place um, about which the man of God, I can, sorry, I can read this. The man of God told us, thus he warned him. So he guarded himself there more than once or twice. Now the heart of the king of Aram was enraged over this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, Will you tell me which of you uh, is for the king of Israel? You know, which of you guys is a spy? Who is leaking the critical information? Can you imagine having access to um, critical meetings that impact your life? That by the Spirit of God, God would begin to share stuff and move things? If we could get a revelation of who God is, that He is the absolute authority, so there's situations you're facing where, you know, maybe it's a financial need, whether it's a job need, something else, where God can bring you in and give you counsel and get you to aware that God is Lord over all. He is the absolute. He is King of kings, Lord of lords. And he is able, it says that the king's heart, he can turn like a river whatever way he wants. God can do so that his purposes are achieved. And God is fully in control. He's not caught by surprise. He's never caught. You may be caught by surprise. You may suddenly get something in the, in, the, in the mail that's bad news or an email that's bad news or something that's bad news. You didn't surprise God. And He would love to bring us to a place where it doesn't surprise us, where we can be so in partnership with Him that He's able to share with us, look, this is the plans of the enemy. But don't stop there. Don't stop there. This gets good. And one of the servants said, No, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of, of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. <laughs> so he said to him, Go and see where he is, that I may send and take him. And it was told to him, saying, Behold, he is in Dotham. So the king, he sends out these, he sends his army. He sends, I mean, the whole army, because this guy, he's got to get, because his victory is on the line. And the devil knows his victory over your family, his victory in the area, he's got to defeat you. Because the more you stand, the more you rise, the more you yield to the Holy Spirit, you become a greater threat and the enemy is fully aware of it. And he's got to stop you. And it's one of the greatest honors, you know. Many people would attack uh, Alexander Dowie when he came to Chicago. But the man saw incredible healings, including the niece of Abraham Lincoln and... Um, Buffalo Bill Cody's, uh, uh, I forget her sister, whatever, one of family members, and they saw miraculous healings. There were many famous people healed. Many people testified years later, healed. But Dowie experienced phenomenal persecution because, and he, and he saw it as a badge of honor that the devil was howling. He was arrested one year uh, 100 times. That's not a fun thing. Um, the whole state of Illinois, they put an ad in the paper looking for people to support them so they could stop divine healing, make it against the law. Can you imagine that had the state of Illinois won that time and defeated um, Dowie and his stand on divine healing, that it would have put a case study that could have impacted the whole nation. And Dowie had to go to court, face the state of Illinois, backed of all these resources, and Dowie won. Because all these witnesses that came forward and testified, let me share of how God healed me. And that's how he did it. So we look at the devil was trying to stop and do something. And glory to God, you know, if we will stand the course and recognize that it should be a badge of honor. That the enemy sees you of such worth that he wants to take you out. Because you threaten him. You are an obstacle to him. He's got to kill and still and destroy because he sees the potential worth. So does God. And God has put in you something of great value for this generation, for this people. And God wants to use you in such an hour as this. And yes, you're going through a difficult season, but God is grooming you, preparing you. And you have to press through. And as you press through, you're going to come out of this season more than able with a now word for this generation of breakthrough. The devil knows it and so does heaven. But do you? Let the Holy Spirit reveal that to you. Now, let's go back. So he sends all the army and the enemies often sent all these things. He's trying everything in his arsenal to take you out. 
everything that he can. He's firing at you, every fiery dart, everything he can throw at you to try to defeat you. Maybe you get that. Maybe you can put your hands up. Yes, that's how it feels like. Well, glory to God. God is sending everything in his arsenal to back you. Look at this. Verse 15, now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early. So Elisha has got this man with him that supports him, help him, okay? And um, it written early, got out. Behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And that's where most of we, we get up and we see how we are surrounded by the enemy. We see his chariots, we see his horses, we see his men of war. And this is a scary thing. And it's, you know, we go back to these forces of the enemy. We see all these forces in, in heavenly places, all the wickedness aligned against us. How can I possibly overcome? Now stay with me. I'm, I'm talking about putting on the, the gospel of peace on your, your feet, where you make contact, because this impacts how you run, how you stand. But we've got to see this first. Okay. So he answered, verse 16, do not fear. So the Elias has a different report. So the servant sees this, and that's often what we see. We see all around. But Elias saw something different. And this is what God wants you to get. This is the gospel of peace. This is the good news. And it's a do not fear for those who are with us are far more than those who are with them. Can you imagine the servant? Look, are you crazy? We got the forces of wickedness. We've got all these powers. We've got all these things coming against me. Everything we can, you can imagine. Look, it's the state of this or it's that or it's somebody and they carry great authority. All these things are aligned coming against me. I'm overwhelmed. And, and the Spirit of God turns up, there's more for you than against you. Are you crazy? Look. And the Lord says, no, I want you to look. And so the servant, look at this in verse 17, then Elisha prayed, and may I just pray, God, open our eyes. We need our eyes open to see the resources of heaven that you have backing us, the, the forces of heaven backing us. So see and recognize the Holy Spirit backing us, to fully see things from your perspective, so that we look at the battle from your perspective and the overwhelming support, resource that you have aligned with us, that are for us, Father God. I thank you, Father God. Let us see this thing. And he said, O oh Lord, I pray, open the eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around. You see this, but if we could see in the spiritual realm what God has aligned for you, that God is able, in that board meeting, God is able to get somebody right there. You are not a normal person. You have people in high places. You've got the most influential people on the universe on your side. This is the good news of peace. That you can stay in perfect peace and confidence in your God because He is for you. He is in every place. He's got all the resources necessary to meet the need. It's overwhelming. So as bad as you see all the things the enemy's throwing at you, what heaven has for you is far surpassing. It's more than enough. Go, let's go back in um, 2 Kings chapter 4. Let me just share another story with you. Because I want you to see this gospel of peace. How God wants you to stay in perfect peace by seeing from a different perspective. Seeing the good news. Why, how can I stay in peace in the midst of the storm? I can stay in peace because of the promise of the Lord. I can stay in peace because... I see things now, and I see all of a sudden all the resources of heaven that God is releasing, and it changes everything, because I don't want you to use your mouth and stop the, the Lord. Use your mouth and take action that hinders and grieves the Holy Spirit. And God was about to do something, and you stopped them. But we've got to stay in alignment with, because that's why we have this gospel peace that you're running with it, that everything you are doing is built upon these shoes of the peace where you are in a, such an alignment with the Lord. And so look at this. Now there came a day in verse 8 when Elisha passed over to Shunem where there was a prominent woman and she persuaded him to eat food and so it was often as he passed by he turned in there to eat food. So there 
she, uh, she said to her, Behold now, I perceive this is a holy man of God passing to us continuously. Please let us make a walled upper chamber and let us set a bed for him and a table there and a lampstand and it should be whenever he comes that he can turn in. You know, you want to have a reception for the Holy Spirit. You want to have a reception for whatever. Don't hold your place there. Would you just, just hold your place there, okay? We're going to come back. I'm just going to highlight some things in Ephesians 6 because you've got to get, sorry, Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, so stay with me. If you read the whole of chapter 4, and I'm going to start verse 17. Say, so this I say to confirm to you with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance in them, because of the hardness of the heart. And so I want you to get hold of it because this is where you're a spiritual person. You walk according to a new order. You do not walk as the unbelievers do. You do not walk as the world does. You're not facing the storm and the situation like the world does. Stop facing that way. Stop trying to face it in the futility of your mind, in the depression, discouragement of your mind, but rather walk in the, this new order by the Spirit of God. And it goes on. Um, and they have become callous, given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity or greediness. But you didn't learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught him just as the truth is in Jesus. And it goes on in reference to your former manner of life that you lay aside the old self. So you're going to have to lay aside. I want you to get a hold of this. Lay aside the old self, the old way of thinking, the old way of doing, the old way of interpreting. Many of you have approached this storm with all the hurts, all the bitters, all the things God wants to, you to get that out of your life. So that today you're going to face this thing as the new creation. You are going to overcome as the new person. And you're going to walk this thing out as the new person. You have to put off the old self and put on the new. And it goes on to explain that. Verse 20, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and you put on the new self which is in the likeness of God. So you're going to walk like God. I think like He thinks. I see things. Like Alicia, I can see things now from a different perspective. Okay? I'm no longer walking in the futility of my mind. Based on what I see and feel, I'm walking a different walk. And He didn't stop there. Um, Verse 26, be angry and yet do not sin. And do not let the sun go down in your anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. And it goes on. And, and one of the things I want you to get a hold of is how you act towards others. And the midst of this season, you've got to stay in peace. Don't allow strife in. Because the minute you do, you open and give the enemy opportunity. Because he went on there, verse 30, do not grieve. The Holy Spirit of grace of God, by whom you've been sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away from you, along with malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also forgave you. I want that in you. That is so essential in this battle that your heart now is tender. Your heart is forgiving. Your heart is not full of slander. Get rid of it. If you're wondering what will keep you in the storm, it's your mouth, it's your attitude, it's what's in your heart. So allow the Holy Spirit to do such a surgery on you to remove all the slander, all the malice, all the stuff that you walked in, in the old man, the gossip. Kill it. You're going to make a decision right now by the Holy Spirit. Allow Him to do such a work in you as to be changed. Receive the Holy Spirit in a very powerful way today because you need to be changed. You've got to put on. You've got to get rid of the old. You're going to have to make the decision today because you can continue through the storm or you can make a decision to walk according to the new man and put on the gospel of peace so that you walk in a peace. You're always in peace no matter what. And you see things from the perspective of heaven. You see things based on how God sees things. So go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. And so they build Elisha this room. And it blesses Elisha. And so I always want to receive. I want to be a blessing to the body of God because you sow seed. There's so many things. we got to realize the importance of sowing good seed. Because don't forget, that what you've sown, you will receive back. I want to produce a good harvest in my life. So I'm being, trying to be careful what seed I'm sowing. Don't sow slander or malice or gossip. Don't sow those seeds and give an opportunity for the enemy. 
but sow good seeds of tenderheartedness, compassion, forgiveness. Sow the good seed. But you don't know what they did to me. There's more on the line than what they did to you. You know, you did so much against Jesus. You can't even imagine. And he forgave you. F choose to forgive. There's so much more at stake than your pride, than your hurt. And if you allow, he will come in and he will find a room where he will heal and restore. And as you look what Alicia did, um, verse 13, he said to him, Say now to her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Uh, would you have spoken for the king of the captain of the army? And he, she answered, I am among my people. So he said, What is it then that can be done for you? And she answered, Truly she has no son, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said to her, At this season next year, you will embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. And so in the midst of doing this, sowing the seed, God is able to put back. And God says, I'm going to give you a son. And God has given you promises. Now that promise is going to be tested. That promise is going to be challenged. But you, it's how you walk. It's how you now walk out this season. It's so critical. And so she receives the son. Okay, verse 17, the woman conceived and bore a son at the season the next year, as Elisha had said to her. God's faithful. God is faithful. Now look at verse 18. When the child was grown, uh, the day came that he went out to his father to the reapers. And his father said to my, the, the son said to his father, my, my head hurts. And so he says to the servant, carry him back to the mother. And of course, what happened is the son died. Probably with a stroke or something else. So the son dies. Your promise died. It, it can't get any worse than that. I mean, you can't imagine that precious treasure dead. You've been standing for a long time. This has been the desire of your heart. You finally got it. You got the promise and it materialized dead. It looks like it's all over, but it's never all over for God because you got to see things from a different perspective. See, Elisha walked under a different law and he didn't have, get a hold of this. Jesus said that the least in the kingdom is greater. You may raise up Elisha and say how wonderful we is, but Jesus said the least in the kingdom. So if you say, I am the least in the kingdom, you're still greater than Elisha because you have the Holy Spirit, not just an anointing, but you can walk in this 24 seven and you have the resource of heaven backing you. You got more than what Elisha had. So let's go on. So the woman says, go get Elisha. Good thing. And so the man comes up to Elisha and verse 23 said, um, why do you go to him today? Uh, it is neither a new moon or Sabbath, etc., etc." Now let's go on. Verse 24. Then she saddled the donkey and said to the servants, drive and go forward and do not slow down the pace uh, for me unless I tell you. Keep going forward with God. Don't slow down. Your breakthrough's on the line. Keep pressing forward. Keep the intensity. Keep going. Guard your heart. Stay in the peace. Now, I want you to learn from this woman because she's just lost her son. Okay? This meant everything to her. Her husband's now very old, so it's impossible for her to have another child. She just lost the promise given. And she keeps going forward and says, Do not stop me. Do not hinder me. And I want you to get that spirit. Do not stop me. Do not hinder. I don't want the pace to slow down. I'm pressing forward. And so, look at this. Now, in verse 25, she went up and came to the, Mount, to the man of God on Mount Carmel. You need to get in his presence. You need to go after God If right now. Get a hold of him. How much do you want him? How much do you need your breakthrough? You're going to have to spend time, go after him, and lay hold of him like never before. Hunger, get a holy desperation and lock in his presence until you get hold of the hems of his garments and don't let go. Hold fast. Get to the place. This is your place of peace. This is the place of victory. Don't be distracted. See, the enemy will distract you. You got to say, no, do not stop the pace. Do not stop pressing for it because I've got to get this. I've got to lay hold of the man of God, which is Jesus right now. I'm going after Jesus with everything within me. Nothing is going to stop me. And, and get that in your heart, okay? 
in verse 25, when the man of God saw her at a distance, he said to Gehazi, um, his servants, behold, there's the Shumanite. Please run now, meet her, and say to her, is it well with you? But that's not what he said. How is your peace? Because the word peace means to be nothing missing, nothing lacking. So when Jesus says, my peace, I give you, I want you to be nothing missing, nothing lacking, at rest, whole, complete. That's what that word means. So when Jesus decreed it in your life, he was decreeing that you would be in such a place, nothing missing, nothing lacking, whole and complete. And so when you come into his presence, the first thing he wants us is, how is your peace? And so he said that to her. And look at this, 27. And she came to the man of God to the hill and caught him. Sorry, I should go back there. In verse 26, please run now meet with her and said, you know, how is it? Uh, is it well with your handmaid, husband? It is well with your child. And she answered, it is well. That's not what she said. It is nothing missing, nothing lacking. She meets the man of God whom she needs an answer from and her immediate response is nothing missing, nothing lacking. That's not true, but it is true in Christ. Go on. Verse 27 uh, when she came to the man of God to the hill, she, ta she caught a hold of his feet. And that's why I want you to grab hold of his feet. Don't let go. And Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone. For her soul is troubled within her. And the Lord has hidden it from me, but has not told me. Then she said, did I not ask a son from my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? She laid hold of the promise. I'm reminding you of the promise. She did not confess the problem. She said, no, I'm not missing. I'm not lacking because you know what? I've got hold of you. You made promise. It is not my responsibility to fix it. You made promise. And as far as I'm concerned, because I trust your promise, I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. And she was decreeing over her circumstances. I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. You made promise. It is your responsibility to fix this. It's your responsibility to fulfill your promise. She went back to the promise, not my son is dead, not reiterating, affirming her problem, but rather she said, I have peace. I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. And it goes on, look at this. Verse 29, then he said to Gehazi, gird up your loins, take my staff in your hand and go your way. If you meet any man, do not salute him. And if he salutes you, do not answer him and lay my staff on the lad's face. He instantly knew what the problem was. God knows he's not taken by surprise. And that rod was his staff of authority. Because you lay hold of the promise and you're saying, God, I am not laying down my peace. I will refuse. I have got the gospel of peace, the good news that I am nothing missing, nothing lacking. You are my salvation. Do you understand what I'm getting hold of here? This is the gospel peace. This is the good news, that he is your salvation. He is your peace. He, that in him, I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. I am whole, complete. Now, in the natural, there is a situation. How do I address it? You may promise. I am holding you to your promise. Because right now, the enemy is saying this. The enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy, and it's your promise on the line. I'm reminding you of your promise. You grab hold of his ankles, and you don't let go. I am holding you to your promise. I am nothing missing, nothing lacking. You said it. You will do it. And the response of heaven was, take my authority and put it over the need. Do you not take that authority, refuse to let anything distract you, take the authority of heaven, the word of God, and decree it over the need. The word says, the word and the spirit, anointed with the, the authority of heaven, now decree because I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. God, you made promise. Therefore, I decree over this thing that your kingdom come, 
your will be done as it is in heaven. And you've got a precious promise of authority. And I want you to get in before the throne room so all of a sudden God speaks a promise to you. Yes and amen. And go in my authority. Go in my name. Because you've been given the name of Jesus. You've been given the authority of that name to go and in that name decree what heaven has said over that need. So that need must bow so that you are nothing missing, nothing lacking. You are whole. Did it work? Yes, it worked. We see that the woman received back her son. Verse 32. When Elisha came into the house, behold, the lad was dead and lay on the bed. So he entered, shut the door behind both and prayed to the Lord. And when he went up and lay on the child, he put his mouth in his mouth and his eyes in his eyes and his hands in his hands. Okay. And warmth came back. There had to be a transfer. And sometimes, you know what? It, it's going to take everything. You're going to get on the altar and you're going to stand and decree. And there's going to be a battle where you're just going to have to hold fast that promise. And you're going to have to breathe that promise over the situation. You're going to have to stand and hold fast. And there's an endurance. And it's not the fun, but the gospel peace. I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. Don't allow the storm in you to distract and to steal and kill and destroy. But rather, hold fast your peace. And if you've got to go back into the presence of God, lay hold of the presence of God, do it. You may have to do it 20 times a day. But don't lose your peace. Don't lose that you are nothing missing, nothing lacking. God is with you. And that you've got a hold of it. And as I keep confessing that word, God, you promised, you said, and hold fast that promise, decree that promise. This is the gospel. Jesus is your salvation. To whom shall I look? Who's my help come from? My help comes from the name of the Lord my God. I just feel led to go to Psalm 3. So let's go to Psalm 3. O Lord, how my adversaries have increased. Many are rising up against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no deliverance for him and God. And we stop there. The enemy is increased. It's an overwhelming, far surpassing attack. It's greater than me. It's beyond my ability. God, I, I, this is, I've never been, I've been so stretched. This is bigger than me. I can't overcome this one, God. Good. You're in a hard place. And the hard place, that's where the real battles are fought and the real victories are won. This is where you get the medals of honor. This is where you get the testimonies that are birthed. This is where you gain something from heaven that no one can challenge. Where you say, look, I was in the hardest place and I got the victory. And you have a testimony to share. And you lay hold of it right now because you overcome, the, by the, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, which is not past or, or future tense. It is a now thing. I have a testimony now. Father, you promised. You said in your word and you hold fast the word. And you love not your life unto death. And every air of me that's been killed and crucified, God, I'm okay with. Because in this hard place, I may be dying, but I'm gaining a far surpassing victory. And I'm going to come out of here with something. And look at this. Uh, but you, Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. You've got to get a hold of that in a secret place where all of a sudden the smile in his face radiates and impacts you and puts a smile on your face. When you see him say, all is well. I am more than enough. When you get a revelation that your God is bigger, that's the good news of peace. My God is bigger. How can I walk with peace? How can I declare I am nothing missing, nothing lacking in the midst of the storm? Because the God who's bigger, the God who's greater, the God who's mightier is with me. And His Word, at His Word, everything changes. His Word has the power to create. His Word has the power to build up and to bring down. His Word is absolute authority. And He's with me. And so I'm holding fast your Word. What you say is absolutely true. Your word, your word. Hallelujah. And I'm fixed on him. And in this place, just get, get in worship. You, you're going to have to stay in worship in the hard places. You're going to have to fix your eyes on Jesus. You know, I always found there's certain worship songs that are in season. They just have the anointing for that time. And they minister to you. Go, glory to God. Play it 400 times. Play it and let it minister to you. Let the joy of the Lord just invade every part of your soul. 
until you are so secure in Him that you know in the midst of the storm. And you have such good news. Because, as I said, you're going to have something to preach afterwards. You're putting on these shoes, so you've got a testimony. Because you cannot give what you ain't got. You cannot share a testimony of Jesus, the one who's more than enough, until you got it. You cannot go out there into a world that's in a difficult, hard place and say, I've got good news for you. They're going to challenge it. You're going to say, this has been tested and tried in the fire. This is solid. Oh, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Hallelujah. Verse 3, verse 4. I was crying to the Lord with my voice, and He answered me from His holy mountain. And I like the next one. I lay down and slept. And most of you can't sleep in the midst of this. But He said, I lay down and slept because I had a peace. My enemy is rising. How can you lay down and sleep when the enemy is coming in to overwhelm and destroy, to kill? I mean, just it's more than enough because I laid hold of my God. I got hold of him and he is more than enough. There's more with me than against me. And they are circled around me. It is now my job to get in line with them and allow them to be released in my life. So I want to get my actions, my, my everything that I do to align and enable the Lord to work in my life. Hallelujah. It goes on. I awoke for the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people who have set themselves against me. Round about, arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you have smitten all my enemies on the cheek. You have shattered the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord and blessings be yours on your people. Hallelujah. Now, it goes beyond me where God, this, what you're doing in me is going to be a blessing to the people. Do you see here? I'll, I'll get a hold of this. Sometimes you just got to rest in His presence until you get to the place where your God is greater, where your God is more than enough, and now God has a bigger purpose that He's trying to do in and through this. I, I want to finish with this. 1 Corinthians 3. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13. Each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. Your work will be tested with fire. And I want to have a message that I can give in season that truly meets the need of people, that blesses them, that brings them to a closer relationship with Jesus. I'm not trying to draw you, you've got to get this teaching series, you've got to buy that. No, I want you to get a more deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. He's your answer. Jesus is what you need. You don't need me. You don't need to teach it. You need Jesus. You need to lay hold of Jesus. Fall at, the, at his feet. Get a hold of his promise and say, God, all is well with me because you promised and I'm holding fast your promise and I will rest in your peace. I will stay in your peace. Though 10,000 stand up against me, an overwhelming army, I will trust in you that you will rise and you will defend me because salvation, my salvation belongs to you, O Lord. It comes from you, and I'm holding fast that promise, and I'm decreeing, and you need to decree it, speak it of your life. The prom You promised, Lord. You may have to run a thousand times repeating, you promised, you said in your word, and I want you to go back and keep finding more verses to support your case. You said, God, you promised this. You said it, and you will surely do it, God, and decree it over the situation, and hold fast, but hasn't changed, then just keep praying. Keep standing, keep enduring. Hold fast the word of his endurance. Patience, let patience have its perfect work. Trust in him and have a knowledge in him. There's coming the day where the seas will change and you're going to have something of surpassing value. And if we could just go in a time machine forward, right into the future, and see ourselves in the victory, we would endure differently because you would have such a peace. Well, in him, he wants to show you through the word, a promise that takes you into the future and says, all is well. This is where I'm taking you, trust me, by faith. 
Trust me, because we're trying to earn it by works. We're trying to make it happen by what we feel, touch, and everything else. But you're going to have to, by simple faith in the Word, simply trusting that God is the one able. You cannot make it happen. You can try this, and you can try that, and all it's failed. The enemy is too big for you. The attack is too great for you. So you've come to the place like David, where I'm just going to lie down for a while, because it's too much. If I'm trusting my ability, it's all over. But I'm trusting in Him. And He is more than enough. He is more than enough. He's bigger, greater. Hallelujah. So receive that today. Put on those shoes of of peace. All is well. All is good. I have nothing missing, nothing lacking. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. I pray that you're blessed. We're praying for you. Be praying with us. And, And hallelujah. Let's get expecting. Because our God is an awesome God, and He is always more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen.